Hey guys, back again for another Car Talks. In this Car Talk, I want to talk about the Microsoft MVP program and more specifically how you can become a Microsoft MVP. So if you're not familiar with the Microsoft MVP program, it is a reward and a, a program that's built around the reward that's presented to um, IT professionals, software developers, um, all kinds of different people, all different walks of life around Microsoft products. So um, they're specifically focused on different categories in Microsoft. When I first was an MVP, I was a PowerShell MVP. Then I, we all got moved into the cloud and data center management MVP. There's also MVPs for Microsoft Office programs, Office and productivity programs, um, Xbox, um, and there's Azure, the, um, the cloud and data center management, but there's a lot, there's dozens and dozens of categories out there that you can become a Microsoft MVP program. And it is rewarded to community, um, community experts that provide uh, value to the community for whatever category they're doing. So for me, uh, I can speak from my experience, I blog, I do car talks like this, I do YouTube videos, I do Twitter, I answer questions with people, um, you know, forums and things like that. You know, I'm out and about, active, available on the internet in a number of different ways, speaking about um, a topic and answering questions about a particular topic. And my topic is uh, mostly PowerShell, but now it's more, you know, Azure and DevOps and the cloud and data center management piece. So. Um, Microsoft uh, was uh, notified of me uh, a few years ago when somebody uh, nominated me. So you can nominate anybody you want for a, an MVP award. So they go through the process. Um, it's every, it's a, a new thing now. It's like every three months, I believe. I cannot, I can't remember off the top of my head, but every, it used to be every year, but now it's, it's more often to where uh, Microsoft gets together, the MVP team gets together and says, well, this guy needs it, this girl does it, this girl needs it, this guy does it, you know, that sort of thing, and picks who should get the award. Once you're awarded the, uh, once you have the award, you get a nice uh, plaque and a nice uh, trophy that says the Microsoft MVP um, award, and you are good for a year. During the year, year the year after, you need to, to keep up your progress, keep sharing your knowledge and getting involved doing presentations and you know user groups and writing and blogging and all that sort of thing. And then you have to keep your MVP profile up to date. So we all, all of us MVPs have an MVP profile, which you can go to, I think the URL is mvp.microsoft.com, which you can look up all the MVPs. And it shows you all of the public um, activities that, uh, that we do. So, so we can prove to Microsoft that we're continuing this effort. We have to continually submit these um, activities and uh, so that Microsoft can know other things that they haven't heard about, that they can know all the, the contributions that we've done to the, um, the community. And as part of the, the Microsoft MVP program, we also have a, a yearly summit called the MVP Summit um, that we get together every year. Um, it's one year it was in, uh, let's see, November. I think this year is in April. Uh, we all go to the, uh, the Redmond campus and talk with our various uh, teams. Normally there's tracks for each of the MVP categories and we get together with, with other MVPs and the product teams and give feedback to Microsoft what have we seen what have we seen in the community that's being uh, you know that's being well received what things need to be worked on um, and then Microsoft provides us with um, NDA stuff the non-disclosure agreement every MVP has to sign a non-disclosure agreement which then we can uh, you know get more insight into what Microsoft is coming down the road the the, the roadmap and we can kind of prepare not only for ourselves, but we can kind of prepare others in the community and things for you know what's kind of coming on, uh, coming down the road. And the MVP Summit's great. It has lots of hundreds and hundreds of different sessions, uh, mostly all provided by uh, Microsoft um, employees and various product teams. We really get a good insight on um, you know the strategies, the things that work, the things that doesn't, the things that haven't, the things going down, coming down the road, and uh, that sort of thing. And uh, the MVP award is, it's a really, other than, you know, all of the perks, you get, you know, some discounts on subscriptions, 
Um, you know, there's various third-party vendors that will give you free, uh, free products. Uh, just for example, Digicert. I, real, I love that company because um, they give um, free certificates out to um, Microsoft MVPs every year. So I just recently took them up on that offer to get a free um, public certificate. But anyway, you get all these perks, but at the same time, there's a lot of different perks that don't, um, uh, that aren't necessarily as obvious. So for example, when you go into a, when you go into an interview and, uh, or you're on your resume, you have Microsoft MVP, you know, I did all these community things versus the guy that has maybe a little bit more experience than you, but he doesn't have the the MVP title on it with all these community efforts. Who do you think you know, you're going to get the job at that point? The the MVP award is not only good for all the perks and get connections with Microsoft and everything, but a lot of employers, a lot of companies really love to see that um, you know that MVP award logo that you have. You know, I don't necessarily agree with it. Sometimes you know I, I hate the I hate the the fact that if you have a title, you're quote unquote better than somebody else, which doesn't make me better than anybody else. Uh, but to a lot of companies, they would rather the MVP title behind your name really makes you kind of stand out above everybody else and think, oh look, uh, this big company has awarded this person this, uh, you know, this award. If they think he's worthwhile, then he has to be worthwhile. You know, so it's like kind of like Microsoft vouching um, for us. But um, the ways that the you can become a Microsoft MVP, there's a number of different ways. It's all up to the, the selection committee, but. Um, in my experience, there's a few different ways. So first off, you need to be in front of as many different people as you possibly can. That is first and foremost the uh, the most popular way. You can, uh, you know, you can answer all the questions on Joe Bob's forum that has five users on it, but it's not going to do you any good because you need to get more exposure. You need to put yourself out there and help as many people as possible. So for example, answering questions on Stack, uh, stack Overflow, um, Server Fault, the, the big forums are, are going to get a lot of views. Doing presentations at conferences and user groups. The bigger the conference, the better, the better it looks for the, the selection committee. Doing articles. Um, if you, may, you may or may not notice, I do a lot of writing. That's kind of my, my my thing. I do a lot of writing and a lot of training. I do a lot of online stuff. I don't do a whole lot of offline stuff because it's not my thing and I just I hate public speaking in general. But it doesn't matter. It's, it just matters about the eyeballs. On the internet, I can get millions of eyeballs rather than you know a few hundred at a, a conference talk. So the part, the point is to get as many eyeballs as possible. A few ideas. Blogging. Blog as much as you can. Get as much exposure to your blog as you can. Forums. Um, training courses. I did training courses through Pluralsight and also Udemy. It's all about doing the pro the training and everything around the particular products. Freelance writing. I do a ton of writing on sites like uh, For SysOps, uh, Tom's IT Pro, InfoWorld, CIO. That's kind of my thing, the, the, the writing thing. Um, just getting involved, organizing a community event, for example. Um, or, um, you know, really, there's really no really no formula to it people have asked for a formula forever and ever and there's really no formula it's it's just all about getting out there getting as much and getting as front as, as many people and many IT professionals in my case that you can anybody in that niche or that category that you're looking for and just really kind of evangelizing um, you know Microsoft products you're kind of like the the unpaid uh, uh, Microsoft evangelists you know even though some people don't like it that you know we don't get paid I mean I would do this uh, the MVP program and in my opinion any good MVP doesn't do it just for the program for example if I lost my MVP award um, today I would still be doing the exact same thing to me the MVP award is just kind of a, a byproduct of what I just love doing every day and it will be a lot easier versus you know I'm going to go out I'm just gonna get this MVP award and then I'm just going to do the bare minimum I can to stay on board. That's not the way to go. Just keep going. Uh, you eventually, if you haven't started already, you'll eventually see like, wow, this is really rewarding. I mean, the MVP word is great, but you know, I won't do it um, regardless anyway. But 
Um, that's it for today's car talk. I hope I uh, gave you some good information about being a, an MVP um, today. So I'm home. So it looks like I am, will leave you with that. Thanks.